In this week's new chapter of Blue Lock, chapter 244, titled PXG, I think it was more than safe to assume that the chapter would mainly be focused on PXG and their match against FC Barcha. And in this chapter, we get to see a player that we all missed, and some more info about Francis PXG. Hey guys, Dark Hero Josh here. Today we're going to be talking about and diving into Blue Lock, chapter 244, PXG. So without further ado, let's just get straight into this video. After last week's chapter with Kaiser saying how he found a way to destroy Isagi, this chapter starts off with the Bastard Squad in the Germany Stratum 4 man room. As we see Corona calculating that scoring a goal in the NEL is now worth between 30 to 50 million value increase. Yukimiya backs this up because Isagi's value increased by 100 million since he got 2 goals and an assist. Even if they take other factors like chances created into account, it probably adds up to that amount. He already says that he got valued 20 million thanks to his assist, so to simply put it, your value increases if you contribute to the goal. As all three of them are determined to increase their values, we see Isagi on the bed looking at the NEL ranking, pointing out that right now the difference between Rin and his value is only a mere 30 million, asking himself if he outscores Rin in the PXG match, if he can overtake him. Isagi adds on, saying that the title of Blue Lock's number one player is just right in front of him now as he says that he wants to beat and surpass Rin to see what the scenery is like from the top. While Isagi is thinking about that, we see Yukimiya tell Isagi to come watch the 7th match between Barcha and PXG with them. As the squad walks into the monitor room, we see Raichi and Gagamaru already there as Raichi says that the game is about to start. As Isagi wonders what kind of team PXG is, adding on saying that in order to become the world's number one player, he needs to analyze Rin and the rest of PXG. As the match kicks off, we see PXG is running a 3-5-1-1 formation with Rin in the striker position, Nanase on left wing, and Tokimitsu on CDM. And Choppa, who we might know as Choppy, the possible new Gen World 11 on PXG, as the center back. As Isagi sees this, also seeing that Shido is on the bench, we see Otoya and Bachira in front of Rin, telling him to try and get past them. We then see Nanase and Tokimitsu open behind him. Isagi sees that they're providing Rin with support while simultaneously creating a 3 on 1 situation. We then see Rin, Nanase, and Tokimitsu make a one touch pass to each other, but as Tokimitsu passes the ball, Rin lets it go by, leaving number 6 to pick it up. As number 6 sends a pass to Rin, Isagi notices that he's in range to use his trump card, a highly accurate curve shot. As Rin shoots the ball from outside the box, he makes the goal, giving PXG the first goal in this match. But that shot from him was different from his regular shots. Izagi describes it as a devilish spinning mid-range shot. Gagamaru questions when did Rin learn to shoot like that. Izagi realizes that by adding different spins to his shot, Rin just increased his scoring options drastically, finally seeing that this is the new Itoshi Rin. We then see Julian Loki stand up as he requests a substitution change. As Raichi questions this, we see that they're taking Rin out and bringing my goat, my beloved, Shido Ryusei in, as well as Zantetsu and Kurasu, changing their formation to a 3-3-3-1 formation. With Shido as the striker with Zantetsu on right wing and Kurasu as CDM. As the match restarts, we see that this is an entirely different system from when Rin was on the field. As we see Karasu steal the ball from Otoya off a rip as he makes a pass to Zantetsu. Isagi describes this playstyle as more of a counter attacking style, noticing how they immediately go on the counter once they gain possession of the ball. As Zantetsu passes the ball to number 6, Isagi says that by using a high speed amount of combinations, they move to set Shido up to score, as number 6 sends Shido a high arching pass. Gagamaru says that there's no way Shido can get to that pass being that it's just way too fast, but that's when Shido shocks us as we see the skull emoji before he takes the shot. Mind you, while the same defender that was on Kunigami when he scored his lefty shot in the first game and makes the shot, giving PXG a 2-0 lead. As Gagamaru is shocked, Isagi says that Shido is an otherworldly bad shot taker and maker, but that was still a crazy level demon shot. Raichi asks how they're supposed to game plan against a dangerous team with two distinct styles of playing, but that's when Isagi says that that pass to Shido just now was intentional, and that number 6 knew Shido's tendencies and intentionally sent that pass, with Hiori agreeing with him. 
As Gagamaru asks what those two saw from that play, Isagi also mentions that his assist to Rin was also intentional as he delivered a pinpoint pass with some backspin so Rin had more scoring options, commenting that he's good. Hiyori adds on saying that not only does he have a good understanding of Shido's instinctive playstyle, he can also sync up with Rin's vision and playmaking, possibly putting him up as a potential candidate for possessing metavision. The reason PXG can win with two polar opposite playing styles is because of the beautiful passes from PXG's number 6, Charles Chevalier, as we get a close-up of him, with Isagi stating that he's PXG's heart, ending off the chapter. Now this chapter was crazy, I want to see more of PXG and mainly Loki's philosophy of football being that I like how they're really putting the infinite substitutions to use in the league as well as their use of formation changes after they score a goal, possibly to keep the enemy team from adapting to their playstyle or giving everyone a chance especially from blue lock to play on the pitch or whatever the case may be. This Charles guy seems interesting being that he's able to link with both Shido and Rin at a very high level so I want to see more of him and his character for sure in the future. A lot of people think that he's a new gen world 11 but honestly if he was I don't see why the author felt the need to not include that in his little title box next to his name and I don't know if there's a reason for him if he's trying to hide it or something but for now I think the safest option to say is that until actual evidence that proves and deadass says that he's a new gen world 11 i'm not gonna say or claim that he is but yeah that's all i've got for you guys with this chapter review of 244 so if you guys did enjoy the video then please leave a like subscribe to the channel if you're new follow the ig and twitter of course and comment down below what other things blue lock should i talk about next on the channel and without further ado i hope you guys do have a great day and see ya